Today, we're gonna be taking a close look at your car's paint. Well, maybe not that close. But today, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the number one enemy of your vehicle's paint. And it's a problem that every single vehicle has, even if it's brand new. You ever look at the back of your car really closely at your paint? Sometimes people aren't paying attention to it. But you come in real close and you see all these little orange dots on the paint. What causes that? Well, it's actually ferrous metal or brake dust shavings or iron deposits from driving around, maybe from your brake pads, maybe from construction, or maybe from if you live in an area where there's just a lot of uh, high traffic, but it's hot and it gets embedded into your paint. What can happen is if you don't remove it, it will actually turn into rust. It will start to get larger like this one here, or maybe this one and eventually it will start to pit into your clear coat. Now, if you see it, what you wanna do is immediately do what we call a decontamination. If you do a contact wash and you notice that those orange spots are still there, that's because they're actually bonded with your paint and you're going to have to decontaminate your paint to remove them. Now, how do you do that? Well, if you don't feel comfortable, you can always bring it to a professional detailer because this should be a part of their maintenance that they do on your vehicle. But what we're gonna do actually today is a chemical decontamination as well as a mechanical decontamination. We're gonna do two things to remove this. First, we're gonna spray a product onto here that will actually help to go in and chemically release the bond that this little orange deposit has with your paint. So then we can come in with our mechanical decontamination, either a clay bar or a clay towel, and abrade it off. Now, again, that might sound like a lot. It's really not. You're spraying an iron remover, let it dwell, let it react, and then come in, do a quick clay towel treatment. Might need to do a little bit more of a clay bar treatment, and sometimes that can actually scratch the paint because you're using an abrasive, because it's bonded. It's kind of a microscopic rock chip sometimes even because you could have tar and things like that that you might abrade the paint and mar it. Now, even though this process can induce some minor swirls or marring on your paint, I'm going to share with you guys some tips on how to prevent needing to polish your vehicle by taking safety precautions. But since we're getting this ready for a coating, we're going to polish it anyways. So then we will polish the paint afterwards to remove those minor scratches or the marring that we could induce. So we're getting this ready for a ceramic coating. We have to remove all of this rail dust, all of these bonded contaminants before we lock in the condition of our paint with our ceramic coating. So I'll share with you guys one product that you can use to do your chemical decon that will add lubrication during this step to help reduce marring. Uh, and you can actually also use this product to clean your wheels as well. It's a phenomenal wheel cleaner. So let's go ahead and get this paint cleaned. So like I said, we need to do a contact wash first to remove all of the light dust and anything that is not bonded with our clear coat before we come in to do this process. That's just going to help reduce the amount of marring or swirls that we could possibly induce during this process. So we did our contact wash and you can see that these orange spots are still there. Again, that is why we call them a bonded contaminant. If you actually run your finger over it, it feels just kind of a slightly gritty to the touch. I actually did a clay towel treatment last time I saw this customer's vehicle. So all of this is kind of new. We did have some heavier ones, but you can see all of these rail deposits or rail dust are still there even after doing our contact wash. For the most part, the, the paint is actually pretty smooth. No amount of going over is going to remove that. Even on our lower panels, we have some larger deposits that are actually starting to turn to rust. You can actually see where they, they actually feel like they're pitting into it a little bit. But I actually told the customer that he had some pretty major rail dust, especially on the lower sides here, that I needed to do a heavier clay bar treatment the next time I saw the vehicle. Um, I said, but you know, it might mar the paint, it might scratch the paint. You can see we do have some love marks that we need to polish the paint anyways. And so he actually said, let's just go ahead and do that treatment next time we see the vehicle. And then he actually called me back and said, hey, can we add a ceramic coating to it? He's seen a lot of my videos, uh, was intrigued by it. And so we're gonna go ahead and apply that. But you can see our rail dust is actually uh, pretty major. And if left unattended, 
this would become a big old rust issue for the customer. So we're gonna kind of focus heavy on this section here with our iron remover and our clay bar treatment. Uh, we might try a clay towel treatment, but clay towel is typically going to be for fine bonded contaminants. Like you have smaller ones like this, that should come off easier. But when you have heavier rail deposits, sometimes a clay bar is going to be more effective. You're not gonna have, have to spend as much time going over to remove that bonded contaminant, uh, but hopefully our iron remover will help kind of break that chemical bond and make the removal process easier. That way we don't have to be as aggressive. Before we get started, I just wanna note, you'll notice that I am in the shade we're working on a wet panel. We're gonna wet everything down, keep it wet. You don't wanna do this in direct sunlight. You don't wanna do this on a hot panel. Um, so if you don't have shade, find shade. Um, iron removers typically are not sun friendly. And if it starts to dry out, either respray your product down or kind of mist it with water. Uh, because again, you do not want to let these products dry on the panel. We do have a lot of trim on the lower parts of our vehicle. Most iron removers are gonna tell you to try to avoid plastic trim because they're just not ideally trim friendly. So we're gonna keep an eye out for that. Hopefully we won't have that issue, but I am taking precautions. We're working in the shade, out of direct sunlight, working on a wet panel, and obviously not gonna let the product dry on there. Now, uh, this trim is in actually pretty good condition. The only one that's kind of pretty faded is our back bumper. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but for those that might get nervous about using this product on plastic trim, I think sometimes if the trim is, is in really bad condition, that's where you need to be concerned. But if we're in pretty good condition like this and we take those precautions, I think we should be good to go. If you've ever worked with iron removers before, some of them can be quite stinky. They kind of have a rotten egg slash perm smell to them due to the chemicals within them that are gonna react with the iron. But actually Stoner Car Care came up with an iron remover that is scentless. So we're gonna test that out today. So because I don't want this product to dry on there, we're gonna kind of respray quick and then do a clay towel treatment. We do have a little bit of sun here, so we're going to try to work fast. This is where we're doing the mechanical decontamination using a clay towel. Some of these are more stubborn, but again, if I were to use a clay bar, it might remove it faster, but it's more abrasive. A clay towel with proper lubrication is actually safer on paint when you're using kind of an ultra fine one like this. For those that have never used one of these before, this is actually a polysynthetic clay towel that will help pull the body contaminants off of the paint onto the towel. And this is the part of the process that can be just a little tedious. So we're gonna finish this up in time lapse and bring you guys back in. I prefer to use a clay towel in most instances first because it is going to be the most gentle on the paint versus a clay bar, which I'll show you guys in just a second what a clay bar is. Some people have never seen it, never heard of it, and it is a great tool to use to maintain your car's finish. But we can get rail dust in all of the tight spaces of your vehicle, seals around emblems, etc. So you want to pay special attention to those areas, but also your trunk and the lower parts of your vehicle, as those are the most prone areas where rail dust will accumulate. So we're going to work on this lower panel together. I'm just going to kind of quickly demonstrate for you how we do that decontamination. So we have our clean soapy water. Let me show you up here. We are getting a little bit more reaction as the product dwells. So I just see here and here. Just little ones all over, but it's not gonna bleed the way you might expect from traditional iron removers. We're gonna take our clay towel and I'm not scrubbing, like pushing hard on the clay towel. I am just guiding it across the paint, very gentle, back and forth. And if you have a more stubborn rail deposit, you just go back and forth over it. Again, not pushing. We're gonna actually allow the friction of the clay towel to pull that off. You can see we've got kind of a honeycomb grid, honeycomb grid to this clay towel. And out of all of the clay towels that I have used from the rag company to nano skin, um, to the generic ones on Amazon, uh, this is the best clay towel that I have found. The most forgiving on paint. 
mind you, if you have heavy contaminants, you, you obviously might need a clay bar or something more medium to heavy grade. They come in different grades. This is ultra fine grade. What does that mean? That means that if you have like a fine layer of contaminants, it's more than enough. Uh, even for a ceramic coated vehicle, you can use this and it will uh, ideally not mar the paint if you are using proper lubrication and washing methods. And I'm, I'm just taking my time. So sometimes this process can be a little bit more involved, a little bit more time consuming, but I'm, I'm trying to be as safe on the paint as possible. We already did our foam crease soak, our contact wash, we removed all the dirt off of it. The only thing that we're really taking back and forth is our rail dust or any sort of tar deposits that are bonded. And again, we've got that honeycomb grid that's kind of helping to pull any larger deposits into those pockets. And we've got lubrication with a product like this. That's why I prefer kind of soap surfactant based iron removers like this uh, versus ones that they might bleed a lot, but if they're thin and not very, you know, they're kind of viscous or whatnot, they're going to run right off and they're not going to give you much lubrication. I like to do uh, use products like this while I am doing my clay towel treatment to give my clay towel every bit of help it can to break the bond that the rail deposit has with the paint. Some people will spray the iron remover, rinse it, then do their clay towel treatment. I think that's wasteful and if inefficient. When you combine the two, you're kind of getting a, a, an extra punch of cleaning power. It's going to make your clay towel or clay bar, clay bar treatment way more effective. We're going to rinse this off. It rinses easily. We don't have a lot of residue left behind. Some leave like horrible residue and dripping and staining, but we were able to remove all of those rail dust deposits on this paint. So now we have a decontaminated panel. And when we come in to polish and ceramic coat, we're not locking in all of those issues on our paint. So we're going to take our time panel by panel going over the paint until it sounds and feels smooth. But because we had some heavier deposits that were turning to rust, I used a clay bar that's going to help go after some of those more stubborn spots faster. For those of you that you want to just use a clay bar or wonder which is going to be more effective, we do have some thicker ones here. And I just have AM Details, their clay bar. You can either use a clay lubricant or soapy water with this clay bar. If that had been unattended to, that would have turned to rust. And you can see clay bar is going to be a lot faster and a lot stronger than an ultra fine clay towel. We just might have more marring. But I'm not worried about that at this moment because we're going to be polishing paint is already pretty scuffed up so in this moment a clay bar might be more effective at quickly removing the rail dust the only downfall with clay bars is that they don't do well on plastic trim and they can leave behind some residue if you don't use enough lubrication let's see if we can see any other ones one right here So again, you don't scrub, you don't need to be super aggressive. Some right here. A good trick to know if your vehicle needs to have this service done to it is to, after washing and drying, put your hand in a plastic baggie, run it over the surface of the panel, and if you hear or feel any sort of grit under the bag, then you know you need to do the service. So the typical rule of thumb when doing a clay bar treatment, again, no pressure, just kind of letting the clay bar glide over, but you go back and forth until you hear no grit and feel no grit. But if you do drop it on the ground, throw it out, get a new piece. And if you feel like you have pulled up a lot of contaminants, you can see we haven't, but if you feel like you've got a lot of contaminants and you'll see either orange or black from tar, just kind of fold it over a couple times, knead it and work to a fresh side. Now I want to show you an iron remover that will show us the purple reaction that most are typically going to show you when they do the acidic reaction with iron. So this one right out of the bottle will have kind of that eggy sulfur smell, but once you aerosolize it, uh, has a little bit more of a fruity pebble smell. So while a little stinky, 
This is actually one of the better smelling ones that I like to work with. It is soap based as well. For those looking for quality iron removers, here's my favorite top four. And wowee, can I already see some huge reactions going on. Let me show you. So with our AM details, these are the reactions that most people are expecting to see. And it didn't take long for us to start seeing those reactions. This vehicle is kind of littered with it. Everywhere where I sprayed, I am seeing kind of that telltale purple reaction. You see, we have a lot more reacting going on. And not that bad of a smell, to be honest. So how would I rate kind of these two? Well, I don't know. I feel like for what it's wanting to accomplish with being scentless or odorless, it's accomplished that. But personally, I actually don't mind a purple reaction if you're working with a product that has a better odor. There are a couple out there that stink something fierce and there are a couple out there that the odor is tolerable. So personally, while I can see the benefits of a product like this, I would be more prone to use something like this for me to be able to see those indicators to know if what I did was actually effective. This has been one of my favorites to work with, so I don't want to necessarily rag on this for those that are scent sensitive. I think this is a, a good product to consider, but would I say that this would be uh, worth giving up some of these other products? Personally, no. I love Stoner. I know that they're always trying to be innovative and, and put out the best product. Uh, I might want to see a little bit more reactive capabilities, um, even if we had to compromise a little bit on the scent. Uh, and maybe a little bit more power in its capabilities of removing those iron deposits. But that's just my personal opinion and review. And that's what you guys watch is because I'm going to be honest with you guys. So once we're done spraying our iron remover and doing our clay bar or towel treatment, go ahead and rinse your vehicle and you can protect your vehicle or apply your topper. And what's left behind is a smooth decontaminated panel and we've been able to prevent rust from accumulating on the surface of the paint. Everything is silky smooth. We have no rail dust, no tar left behind on our paint. We do have some scratches that we're gonna go ahead and just do a quick paint enhancement, try to remove some of them if we can. I'm not necessarily going for paint perfection uh, with this package, but now when we do our ceramic coating, I don't have to worry about any of those bonded contaminants being trapped underneath of the ceramic coating. So for those of you that you want to preserve the paint on your vehicle, step one, do a good contact wash, rinse it off, then come in close to look at your paint. Really examine it. See if you have any of those orange spots. If you have a black, red, really any colored vehicle other than white or light gray, you're gonna have difficulty seeing those orange spots, but I guarantee you they're there. So at least every six months, at minimum a year, you want to make sure that you're doing an iron remover and then a clay bar or clay towel treatment to decontaminate your paint rinse and then reapply your protection or if you have a ceramic coating this is a great time to just do a quick light clay towel chemical decon um, those things are going to come off a lot easier with a ceramic coating because your bonded contaminants your dirt are not going to want to stick as easily but you still want to do this on a ceramic coated vehicle and then you can apply your topper or refresh your ceramic coating but for those of you that really are just looking to preserve your investment of your vehicle this is routine maintenance that I highly recommend at least every six months to a year. And hopefully this helps you understand why we do this and why you need to do this for your vehicle to get the most out of the paint. Hopefully this can help you preserve your investment. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe and follow for future videos that we have coming out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. But as always, we'll see you in the next detail.